What is your favorite go-to thing to draw or paint when you don't have a lot of time but still want to make art? For me, it's horses. So today I'm sharing with you guys a super quick and fun project painting this sweet nuzzling white pair of Arabian horses. I love freehand sketching horses. I used to spend hours as a kid copying them from books. But if the anatomy is really tricky for you and you'd rather skip to the painting, there is a link in the description for a traceable line drawing you can download along with my reference photo. With this drawing, I started by locating the spot where the two noses are touching, roughly in the middle. Try to notice the negative shapes between the two heads. In this case, it's almost a V shape. You'll also want to observe the negative spaces between the two necks. It creates a wide M shape, and note that the horse's muzzle on the right is slightly lower than the horse's on the left. Once you have a rough outline, you can begin to refine the more nuanced shapes, such as the flare of the nostrils, the musculature in the mandible and neck, the flowing mane, the mouth, and the eyes. Notice that the level of the eye on the horse on the left is slightly higher than the horse's eye on the right. Erase any extra marks as you go. Sketch super lightly, especially on the mane, as we're going to be using light colored paint for these white horses. Tighten up your lines and adjust your shapes on the second horse using imaginary plumb lines to compare the different planes from left to right. This ability to judge and measure distances between shapes and sketch exactly what you're seeing is absolutely something anyone can learn to do, and it gets much easier with practice. Once you're happy with your sketch, grab your paints, water jars, brushes, and a paper towel. I'm using just four colors for this painting, Daniel Smith Ultramarine, Indigo, and Burnt Sienna, and Holbein Turquoise Blue for some background color. I have a Princeton Neptune half inch flat wash brush and a couple of silver black velvet round brushes for smaller details. Be brave and start with your larger brush. If you're trying to develop a looser style, using a bigger brush is a great way to do this. It forces you to prioritize painting big shapes marked by light and shadow rather than diving in right away with details. We're going to start with some broad washes of mid-tone values. So I'm taking this very watered down indigo color and starting to paint in the light gray shapes that I see in the horse's face. You can use the corner of the flat brush just to carve out some of those shapes a little bit easier and then use the flat side of the brush if you want to cover a larger area. Flat brushes are wonderful tools for painting broad sections really quickly. I am painting around the eye for now, but you could even cover that up since it's going to be much darker later. For now, we're just trying to get some color on the paper. Most of this painting, by the way, will be wet and dry. So if you're still a little bit terrified by watercolor wet and wet, this is a good painting for you to try. If you are having trouble with your paint drying out on your brush, go ahead and just gently dip it in the water and remove any excess on your paper towel. Covering the ear now with just a little bit of that tinted wash. Again, this is just watered down indigo, or you can use Payne's gray or neutral tint or whatever dark you have. I'm painting a little bit in between the mane and then going ahead and covering that whole mandible with just a really light wash here. Taking that same gray color and outlining the neck, just gently dabbing with the end of the brush. You can twist your brush around and pull it upward in kind of a sweeping motion to match the direction of the mane flowing downward. Make sure to leave little gaps in between your brush strokes so we have the appearance of light colored hair overlapping the darker body. As you approach the outskirts of the painting, feel free to use looser brush strokes. Now I'm mixing up some burnt sienna and wherever I see more reddish tones, like in the dark shadow on the underside of the neck and some of that kind of cream colored mane hair, I'm gonna use that burnt sienna but quite watered down. Now I'm removing some of that paint and then switching brushes to a smaller one. And I'm gonna scoop up that same color using my silver black velvet size eight round brush. And since I decided the half inch brush was a little bit too big for these details, you can use a round brush to scoop that paint in between those strands of long overlapping mane hair. Mix up ultramarine and burnt sienna for more of a dark neutral gray. And we're gonna use this to outline the darker shapes in the horse. Notice how I'm not spending too much time on detail. I'm just getting in the big shapes that I see. These are the shapes that don't disappear even when you squint at your reference photo. Now mix up a black, taking indigo, ultramarine, and burnt sienna. You can kind of combine all three of your dark colors here. More pigment than water. And now I'm painting the muzzle of the horse. I'm pretty much just filling in the entire shape dark black. Fill in the dark shape underneath the neck as well showing that beautiful arched neck and the shadow underneath the ear. And you can also fill in the eye. If you have a fully loaded brush like this, it should last for all of these details without having to reload your paint. 
Make sure to leave a little bit of the white of the paper showing for the eyelashes of the horse and color in the big, dark, broad shape of that dark fur around the horse's eye. I'm also adding some dark details along the neck. Rather outlining, this is gonna be a really loose and illustrative style painting, but already you can see that dark value has added some power to the painting and it's starting to look really cool already. You can paint the shadow shapes in between the mane and then rinse that out Remove the excess on your paper towel and scoop up some more paint. You'll notice you have a lighter color on your brush now. I have really wet paint right now on my brush. Since I'm painting wet and dry, it's not going anywhere. It's going exactly where I put it. Now we're painting the midtones that are connecting the eye and the muzzle. Try to leave the forehead nice and white. And wherever you see little areas in the horse's head that are lighter in value, be careful to paint around those. Scoop up some more burnt sienna. Since we don't have a tan color or a yellow on our palette, we're kind of using our burnt sienna as our warm tone, representing those tans that we see in the reference photo. So the color match is not perfect by any means, but we're just using a few colors, a really limited palette, so work with what you have. You can take a big swath of color and then pull some of that paint that wet paint, pull it downward so that it overlaps past the neck and across the background. Scoop up a little more paint, mix in some more ultramarine. You can see it's pretty wet. It's a lot of water mixed in and I'm drying it in my paper towel as needed. Whenever you wanna start going lighter in value and gradually working your way lighter, just remove some of that excess paint either in the water or on the paper towel or both. And this is how you can quickly and easily adjust your values in watercolor. Scoop up more paint where you want to go a little darker. That area along in the middle of the head needs to be a bit darker. And then I'm adding a few tiny little brush stroke details to the area of fur right underneath the ear and using that bluer tint for the ears themselves. Really working with strong, decisive brush strokes here, not picking at it, not overworking it. Now we're going to create some background. I'm taking my turquoise blue. I just have a little dollop of it on my palette here. It's this wonderful cool blue and I'm using that to paint the negative space between the two horses heads. Most of the time when I'm painting animals, if you guys watch a lot of my videos, I'm always talking about soft edges and we're actually not doing that at all for this painting. Since this is a really loose, quick, illustrative style, we're gonna allow those hard edges to form. And this is what watercolor tends to want to do anyway. So we're not gonna fight it at all with this painting. Just have fun and let the paint do its thing. And also, since we're painting wet paint on dry paper, we have a lot more control over what the paint does and what shapes we're creating. So it is a really, really fun and easy project to try if you're still not comfortable with wet and wet. So take the belly side of the brush and Put down as much paint as you want in the background till you're happy with the shapes and the outer edges of your background shapes. I like to use the background as kind of a playground just to have fun with it and make it really loose and expressive. All right, I'm taking some more of that gray that's in my palette and scooping it across the white top of the mane. Be sure to leave a little of the white of the paper showing. Don't cover it all up entirely. Drop in some more of your burnt sienna. And with that, I think our horse on the left is just about done. We might add a few more little details here to his chest. A little bit of blue, I think, is what it needs. Some ultramarine, a really strong brush stroke right there on the neck. And then I'm gonna pull that up, creating the arch shape of the neck. And then adding a little bit of blue to the head. We wanna have some color harmony. If you decide to put down a pure pop of ultramarine, put it somewhere else in the painting too, so that it doesn't draw unnecessary attention to itself located in just one area. Spread that color out and around throughout the painting for unity. Really quick, if you guys are enjoying this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here. And if you like my style of teaching, I wanna invite you to join my Watercolor Mastery online school. With your monthly membership, you'll have access to over 100 fully narrated real-time tutorials, which all come with a downloadable reference photo, traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies used in each video. There are tutorials for all levels, from beginner to advanced, and I'm adding new videos every single month. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, I'm gonna rinse that out and grab my half inch flat brush again, and it's time to start the other horse. Let's mix up some more gray. I'm using ultramarine and burnt sienna. And when you combine a 50-50 mixture of those two with plenty of water, you get a nice neutral light gray. 
So once again, just like with the first horse, I'm starting with really broad washes, just filling in all of those light tones that I see in the reference photo and avoiding the strip of white along the front of the face, areas that are catching the light. I want the luminous paper to be showing through. Filling in the neck, broad sweeping brush strokes, working on dry paper. When you are working wet and dry, you'll need to grab fresh paint quite frequently. You can see this tinted wash in my brush is a little more blue. And I'm allowing it to just touch the wet paint of the gray that we just laid down and it'll meld seamlessly into the color. These initial washes can sometimes look a little bit ugly, so don't freak out. When we add the really dark values over the top, it'll really start to come together. Just have to trust the process. Now I'm mixing ultramarine and burnt sienna again. Much darker. I have a lot less water mixed in here, so it's a really, really dark value. More pigment, less water. And you can see I really haven't dipped in my water at all to make that mixture. Now I want the two muzzles to be touching and almost melding together in that dark color, almost as if there's no edge between the two noses. Paint a little more carefully with the corner of your flat brush if you decide to continue to use your large brush for these details. And with quick, broad brush strokes, paint the dark details that you see in your reference photo. We see some of the musculature of the face, we see the curve of the mandible, and the dark shadow underneath the neck, arching in the shape of that beautiful Arabian neck. I'm going to balance out some of those dark marks on the other horse as well. As you work on two subjects like this, you may find you need to kind of go back and forth between the two just to balance things out a little bit. Grabbing some more paint and now I'm going to paint in the eye. At this point, if you feel more comfortable switching to a smaller brush, of course, please do. Once again, just like with the first horse, try to leave the highlight or the little eyelashes that are within the dark shape of the eye untouched by the paint. There's a little strand of the mane flowing over the neck. I'm going to switch to the smaller brush to refine that shape to get sharper edges. Rinsing slightly, grabbing a little more ultramarine. And now I have a slightly lighter value on my brush and I'm beginning to lighten those values gradually by dipping in the water and adjusting the color temperature by dipping directly into the blue so it's a cooler color temperature. Pull the paint and push it around as much as you want until you get the shapes that you're satisfied with. Now I've removed a lot of the pigment on my brush, so I have a much lighter value. And I'm sweeping my brush across the front of the eye and the mandible. And underneath the ear, much lighter value now. You can see as soon as we add those really dark values, we actually have a guidepost for deciding on how dark or how light the rest of our values need to be. So it's really helpful to get those darks in as soon as possible. It gives us a comparison point. Now I'm using a really light mid-tone and completing the shape of the neck. We are drawing with paint. We're carving out the shapes of the horse's body using mid-tones, highlights, and darks. I'm taking a little more ultramarine. And of course, the shape of this horse is a little different than the one on the left. His mane is on the other side of his body rather than draped across the front. So it looks a little bit different as far as color and shapes of your brush strokes. But just work with what you're seeing in the reference photo. To create the effect of the mane draped across the back side of the horse's neck, you can gently outline the horse's mane with a dark color and create a couple little strands sweeping in front of the neck. And then the rest of them arc your brush in a curved motion so that it looks like it's draping and disappearing across on the other side. Add the little shadow shape for the ear and a couple decisive brush strokes. Rinse and smooth out any sharp edges that are drawing too much attention to themselves. Here I'm smoothing out some of those dark shapes just a little bit by scrubbing my brush over the top. The last step is to finish our background by completing the negative space in between the head and the neck of our second horse. Once again, I'm grabbing that cool blue, my turquoise blue, and I've pretty much used it up. So if I need to fill in any more space, I can use my ultramarine. And if you accidentally cover up an ear, grab a second brush and just dampen your brush and lift the paint right back out. If you add a couple of dollops of watery paint over the top of your wet paper, You'll end up with some blossoms or blooms such as you see below the horse's neck on the left side and that can actually be really quite lovely in a background. So there we have it. There is our completed quick study of two white horse heads. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.